Hey, buddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as Sejong in Korea. And things are going really well for us. Like, we have made super progress. We're getting, like, great scientists. We're churning our way through the tech tree. We're up to 200 science per turn, well above any of the other AIs. We are a little bit behind culturally compared to, like, Russia, for example. But thanks to Sejong's incredible Hangul ability, giving us a huge boost of culture every time we research a technology from a new era, I don't actually feel like we're that behind culturally. Like, we're we're on pace here. Like, we're, we're researching Renaissance era culture, civics, and we are also researching Renaissance era technology. So I feel like these are actually doing kind of okay. So we take a look at Gyeongju. We have managed to complete the Seowon in here. And we might want to look into getting our next district. There's a few choices that are valid for us here. We could go for a harbor if we wanted to get a trade route. We could also go for a commercial hub. We could go for maybe an encampment to be able to get flood uh, or rather military engineers. We could go for a holy site if we wanted to do some sort of a little bit of faith here. I think if I take a moment to look at my industrial zones, um, the cities that are covered by these industrial zones are like pretty far out. So I may in fact go for an industrial zone in Yeonju. In particular, because I would actually really like to get Leonardo da Vinci if I could. Now, one thing we might also want to consider is going for a mausoleum in Gyeongju, mainly for the plus one great engineer charge, which might actually be the use for Gyeongju. Or do I go for it in Daegu? Actually, I think Daegu is going to be the city to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to go for the harbor in Daegu. That seems like a much more reasonable proposition. No, 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 no. The city's building the industrial zone. Yeah, Gyeongju is going to go for the um, for the mausoleum. I think that's the correct play. So let's go ahead, go ahead, pop down the harbor because if we can get Leonardo da Vinci, that's plus three culture per industrial zone, and then I can double that because he gets an extra charge, which means plus six culture per industrial zone from the workshop. So. Getting Mausoleum plus Leonardo is actually super powerful. I'm going to be going for Industrial Zones anyway this game, so I do feel like this just really fits in with my plans. Is there ever a game where, like, going for Mausoleum isn't a valid choice? I just, you know. Mausoleum is just one of those wonders that just has so much utility in a variety of game modes. Let's go for 100% production towards buildings in the city centre and extra stuff from trade city-states. I don't particularly care what city-states wins. There's the Kilwa. So the power of the Kilwa is the fact that you get three envoys when it's built. When you're the suzerain of a city-state, the city receives a 15% boost to the type bonuses provided by that city-state, which means if I'm suzerain of a scientific city-state, this city will get a 15% science boost. Then, if you're suzerain of two or more city-states of that type, an additional 15% boost is given to all of your cities. So... If I'm Susan of two scientific city-states, this city will get a 30% science boost and my entire empire will get a 15% science boost, which makes this one of the best wonders in the game when it comes to a science victory, as long as you can secure suzerainty of two scientific city-states. And we're about to secure our first one, which will mean we get a nice boost of 15% science in this city, which does not mean much because we have not yet built the Seowon in here. Not a big deal. Let's go ahead and get to work on the industrial zone. We are also going to go ahead and place the aqueduct. This city has a little bit of catching up to do. And what I mean by catching up is that it just needs to generate a little bit more production. So I'm going to try and get this mine online and get this mine repaired. Let's go ahead and get a builder. Maybe I should do the repair first. No, I'll get the... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let's go ahead and send you up to do that repair. Take a few turns. Sadly, it got hit by that volcano, which is always not fun. Might be good for me to secure... Maybe I could sell some stuff off to try to secure some more tiles around my Petra city to maximize its potential. You don't always have to maximize a city's potential, but I think in this particular instance, it might be worth it for me to do so. Let's sell off some horses too. Um, a huge amount of trading just got done there, which means we are now up 71 gold per turn. We have 600 gold in the bank. Let's come through and we'll buy these desert tiles. Yeah, okay. So we've secured a few tiles against our enemies. Now, the potential for Chunchin here is absolutely god tier. It's already up to 30 production. We'll be able to do some really, really powerful stuff. I don't know if we'll go for the Jebel Barkal. Let's have a look at the city overlap. If I can hit four cities. Yeah, it can hit four cities. Hmm. Do I trade a Petra Hill for 16 Faith? A single Petra Hill for 16 Faith isn't a bad trade, considering how quickly I can build that. I mean, 16 Faith might result in me purchasing a great person at some point in this game. 
That's kind of how we have to think about it. There's the Patala Palace. I also need to think about how I'm going to get this Golden Age. Um, one of the things that I want to get is a Huacha. I can get that in seven turns. That'll bring me up to 79 Era Score. I have not yet built a galley, I think. So let's go ahead and buy the galley. Oh, shoot. I have to do a Caravel. Right. Hang on. Can I get the gold I need? Ooh, that might be hard, actually. Trying to sell off what I can. Nobody really has cash because I've been taking all the cash. Is there something I can chop for money? There's copper over here, but I'd have to buy that copper. There's maize there, but I'd have to grow to the maize. Crabs there, but I don't have the crabs yet. Mm, 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 not good. Slightly concerning. What about s levying? Levying is expensive, so I need cash. That's what I really need. I mean, recruit, recruiting Isidore of Miletus won't quite get me the Forbidden City. Not without the mausoleum. Mm. <laughs> Let's have a look at the era tracker. Well, if I were to upgrade to Crossbum, that's an era score. Because I get era score from building things. If I built this library, that's an error score. So plus one error score from the library, that brings me to 60 or 76. Plus four from the Huacha brings me to 80. Plus one, if I buy the library, I can probably build the university in time for the error to finish. Hold on, can I just quickly squeeze out a tiny chunk more cash? I just need like a smidge. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to take this tiny bit of gold from Russia. Then I could buy the library. That's plus one era score. The university will finish before the era ends. That's plus one era score. That brings me up to seven to 81. And then I just need to find one more era score from somewhere. Where could I get that era score? Have I built a unit with iron yet? No. So I would just need to like upgrade a unit, I think, or build a horseman. And I think upgrading a unit is well within my possibility to unleash Niter. Okay. So I think we have uh, managed to navigate that little conundrum. We've managed to secure a golden age. I'm very happy about that. It was a little touch and go there for a minute. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to pull it off, but we have managed to, which is great news for us. Ooh, the Hoacha went down a turn because my capital lost an envoy, which or lost a luxury. Hmm. It's down to six turns. We need production in here. Can I swap a tile? Let me unlock these tiles and yoink this four production tile so that I can make sure this Huacha finishes in six turns, because it needs to finish before the era ends. It just has to. Catastrophic eruption, that's painful. Eight tiles fertilized, six tiles damaged, and two pop killed. That's a brutal, brutal... But actually, it was inside the city of Mecca, so I don't think it actually did too much damage to me. I mean, a few tiles got broken here. Not the end of the world. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Do a little bit of repairing and constructing. Um... You're not ready to be triggered because we don't want to trigger you until we've completed all of the Renaissance era technologies. I am going to chop here to get the harbor slightly faster. I'll start building mines and all that lovely jazz over here. We're exploring with that warrior. Everything is looking fine. Um, I just need to upgrade you. I'm going to go ahead and buy these luxuries. Perfect. That'll bring us back up to seven happy cities, which is a 10% yield boost across seven cities. Siege tactics is completed. Three turns. We got the entertainment complex in Pyongyang. Let's go for the arena that's plus two amenities. Plus one culture as well is quite handy. Mostly we're looking for the amenities. All right, let's go ahead and upgrade that Muscovin. That's plus two era score. Beautiful. Now with the Hoacha and the university, we have definitely secured a golden age. Very, very careful navigation here. Probably not the most important golden age in the history of my empire, but if you can get a golden age, why not? Especially if you can go from a dark age, which we are currently in, into a golden age. That's a heroic age, you know? It's not every day of the week that you manage to pull that off. So that feels really nice as it currently stands. Uh, so there's guilds. We could plug in craftsmen instead of feudal contract. I will wait until the next era to do that because I want to finish the Huacha this turn. I don't want to like, I don't want to do anything that could potentially block that. Uh, let's go to Taruga. Pop you in there. Yeah, I'm going to put Amani into Taruga because I need to get that second suzerainty. So we're going to start working on fighting for that now. And once Amani is established in there, that should be plus two envoys, which should get me the second suzerainty of Taruga, which with the combination of Kilwa should get me a 15% science boost across my empire, which should be a significant boost. 
because I have a really good baseline of science. And um, the higher your baseline of science, the better a percentage modifier is um, in, in terms of uh, the total amount of yield that you will get out of it. All right, here we go. Plus four for building the Huacha and plus one for building the university. We're up to 83 era score. Golden age secured. We've got the university. Now we're currently in the medieval era. We're heading into the Renaissance era from an era perspective, but from a technology perspective, we're heading into the industrial era. I think it would be really nice if we could get our hands on the Oxford University. That would be a 20% science boost in the city, as well as room for two great works of writing slot, which if I buy great works of writing, that would be plus four culture per turn. Plus four culture per turn. Again, it's like having two extra monuments, so that could be super worth it. Uh, taking a look at the city, we could go for the government plaza. I'm going to go ahead and place the Diplo Quarter, and I think the intelligence agency is the way to go when you're playing for a science game. So we'll go for the intelligence agency we'll get that knocked out uh i have the university in chunchen we need to start thinking about our next district in here there's a few valid choices i feel there's a theater square in here depends on if we want to do that we could also go for the commercial hub if we really care about that we could also go for the industrial zone to try to secure a little bit of production down here there's like some okay industrial zones here in particular like if i put one right there that's a plus four, although that would lower the adjacency on this, so I might actually put the industrial zone up here. That would be a plus four. It would hit a pretty good AoE. It would hit most of the local cities. It would mean everything is taken care of. Yeah, let's go for the industrial zone. Remember that also, uh, every industrial zone is also, if I can secure the, um, if I can secure uh, Leonardo da Vinci, it's plus six culture per city. So that's a really, really big benefit if I, if I, if I get those industrial zones up. All right, the world enters into the Renaissance era. We enter into a heroic age. It's a beautiful day. Bombards, pike and shots have been unlocked. Uh, I think the very obvious thing for us to do here is to take reform the coinage for better trade routes. We don't plan on doing settling, so we don't need Hicks and Tracones. Ref Exodus of the Evangelists could be okay. We could take Monumentality. Let me look. Are there any... Yeah, there's not really anywhere I can settle on another continent. Uh, there is potentially another city up here. I mean, like, this land here is relatively fresh water. It's a nice tundra city. We could go for something like Abundant Scott Research Station. It, there is a city up here, I think. Um, but is a city that I actually want to build? Would it be a distraction? It might actually just be a distraction. So I think I'm going to go for Exodus for the plus four faith per turn. The great people points, the great profit points can't make a religion anymore because all the religions are secured, I believe, which means they just automatically get converted because like all individuals of the great profit type have been earned. So they just get auto converted into, um, they get auto converted into faith because they're excess great people points which is very nice. Let's have a look at the city of Busan. I think we definitely go for the granary in here. We got the monument. The city's starting to develop nicely. Okay, we have researched all of the technologies of the Renaissance era. So let's go ahead and pop over here. We'll grab Emily du Châtelet. We're going to trigger her now. So steam power, sanitation, and military science have all been boosted, which is honestly one of the best roles we could have asked for. That's a huge amount of science from Eureka's gained. We're now going to go ahead and get to work on scientific theory, but we do need to be careful not to actually finish it until we optimize our turn. We're looking at a 400 culture boost here. Uh, one thing to consider is that you get, when you do the moon landing, right, over here in the tech tree, uh, you get 10 times your science per turn as culture. So this is kind of like, you just get that ability. Like, if you think about it, I get it, I get uh, a fifth of that bonus every time I research a new technology. So there's like one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths, six fifths, seven fifths. And then I get this. So I essentially get like 12 fifths. So I get two point. Yeah, I get like two point two point six times my science as culture over the course of the game, which is like a really damn nice bonus. But you that's if you factor in the moon landing. It's a it's a really, really powerful bonus. All right. There's a swordsman over here. He's stepping on the wonder that we're building. We should be able to kill him to get rid of him. We're now defending that wonder. Perfect. We have just finished diplomatic service, giving us access to the chancery. And we do want the chancery in the capital, but we do have to build the diplomatic quarter first. Um, the next step for us is probably to go to mercantilism and start working our way towards civil service. To be able to pick up public works and skyscrapers. Let's go for naval tradition for the plus one envoy. Humanism. It would be nice to plug in rationalism, actually, potentially. So let's move towards rationalism. We need to get our cities to 15. We're going to have to start thinking about um, the farms. So we got the dam in Jeonju. Let's go for the workshop. Really nice adjacency on these industrial zones now. Super happy with that. Isidore of Miletus is about to go. Now, I'm a little bit worried about Leonardo being the next pickup, so I am tempted to skip him. But if I get Isidore, I can secure a um, really early mausoleum. 
Well, not really early, but like a really safe mausoleum. Early would have been a long time ago. So I think we just take the risk that Isidore, that like Leonardo can show up in the next one and we lose half of the value of the culture that we get. Um, or, or we just we just don't get culture from industrial zones. Like we could just accept that as a thing. Um, so city has reached 10 population. That's plus one error score. Very nice. Let's go ahead and recruit Isidore. And it is Leonardo. Okay, now that Leonardo has shown up, that does mean I need to make sure that I secure Leonardo. So he's a Renaissance era great engineer and I must have him. Um, he's in integral to the plans, so I can probably finish the workshops to get the plus one great engineer points per turn, but then I'm going to start working projects to make sure that we can secure him. They're only earning two great engineer points per turn, so I'm not in a major rush to secure him, but Isidore will be teleported over to Gyeonju to finish the mausoleum, because if I put one charge into the mausoleum, uh, I will get that charge back, because the mausoleum gives great engineers plus one charge. So it's uh, essentially, it's a bit like building, it's a bit like chopping for the pyramid, right? You get the refund on it. Right, naval tradition is completed. We're going to go ahead and step you up into here. We'll immediately finish the mausoleum. One turn left. It'll happen on the overflow of this turn. Eight turns until you grow to your next pop. I don't know if we need to build an aqueduct. We could build a Patala Palace. I don't want to give up a tile. Instead, I'm going to get you to build me a spy. I managed to get the Granary in Busan. I'm willing to buy this tile in order to place my Seowon. So plus four Seowon. That's pretty damn good. Um, we are going to grab Suzumti of Taruga, taking us from... 244 signs per turn to 287. We are one turn from finishing scientific theory. I'm going to go around to every city and set priority to science so that we can just get that extra tiny chunk of science uh, from people working the campus districts. It should be four signs per city on average. And um, it could be a little bit more depending on what tiles are available. So now we're up to 320 science, which means we will get 640 culture and just about finish humanism in a single turn. So it's a bit like getting a free civic which is honestly super based. It's a really, really powerful ability. Like the tempo it gives you is like super, super good. Damascus has actually flipped independent here. And there has been a gentle eruption near the city of, uh, of Guangzhou. Unfortunately, my science did dip in the turn rollover, but that's okay. We basically finished humanism in a single turn. So that was really nice. Now I need to make sure I go through my cities and turn off science focused because it's not our goal. Our goal is to um, efficiently navigate the tree. Once we have research labs, I will be putting on science focus permanently. But for now, we can just have it be basic focus. All right, let's come into Daegu. I'm going to go ahead and I want to buy this pig tile, but I cannot, which means I need to buy the pig tile from here and then I need to buy the maze tile from here and then I can chop. Well, I need, to, I need to swap the tile first, swap the tile to you, then I will chop. That'll finish the industrial zone, getting me plus three error score and I can get started on the workshop. That's a four turn workshop, which would be really, really nice. And again, this all feeds into the idea that we're looking for Leonardo here. Um, so scientific theory is completed. We have a lot of mines in our empire. So we're going to go ahead and start working on industrialization. My next workshop finishes in two turns, which will boost that technology, saving me a little bit of the science. And I will get plus one production from mines from that, which will apply to a lot of my tiles. I mean, like if I just do a search for mines and Korea, 48 mines in my empire, which means theoretically I'm going to get 48 production from industrialization. And that's not even counting the factory and the coal power plants. Super, super, super powerful situation. I definitely need more builders though definitely need more builders. I'd be quite happy with either a dark age or a normal age in my next era. I think that would suit me quite well. We did just meet Gandhi. We did just finish the mausoleum. So my engineers now have plus one charge. Is there another wonder that I'm really kind of chomping at the bit to get? It is Oxford University, in fact. So let me have a look around at which city could build Oxford. Do I have a good candidate? You make 43 science per turn. You could go for Oxford. It would be adjacent to this volcano. I mean, it's not bad for a 20% science boost in a decent city. City doesn't actually have a granary yet. I'm going to buy that granary to give the city a little bit more housing. Um, I mean, if I go for Oxford here, we're still working on Forbidden City and this city has a lot of stuff it needs to build. Can I find a different city? Could I build it in Chunchen? Chunchen feels like a much better city. Oh, actually, getting University Assigned Core, which is a wonder I almost never build. Um, but other civilizations' trade routes to the city provide plus one science and plus one gold to them. And I get plus two science for every trade route to this city, I believe, which is quite good. It also gives you plus three faith. Sorry, plus three science, plus one faith, and plus two great scientists per turn. It's like a pretty damn good one. Really would have loved to have built the Oxford here, though. It's just not on the cards. Unfortunately, I think Guangzhou is going to be the city that I build Oxford in. So let's go ahead and teleport this great engineer over to Guangzhou and we'll start working on that. With the mausoleum completed, we can go ahead and look into getting a lighthouse in here. It'll give the city just a little bit more housing. 
and we could potentially look into getting the shipyard as well. We might even want to switch to another district, but I should at least get the lighthouse because it also gives me plus one trade route. Trade routes are pretty decent, uh, pretty useful things. Let's go ahead and pop down a camp right there, feeling good about that. This trade route is inactive because I lost one of my trade routes because one of my trade routes was coming from my diplomatic world congress thingy. Somebody has started to steal technology from me, so that's something I need to start to think about. I am going to be a popular target for tech stealing. St. Petersburg. Now, I either want to steal cash. Yeah, okay. 250 cash if I start stealing from Bursa. Seems like a pretty okay steal here. 300 cash. A good way to level up a spy. We might want to consider seeing if we could build a terracotta army to level up our spies too. That is actually a thing. Let's have a look at gold. Uh, we could trade with Cairo. That's a pretty nice one. 21 gold per turn. Three science. I like it. That's like a really damn good trade route. We did just get the intelligence agency. I have a spy on the way in the city of Pyongyang. It's kind of slow, but it will come. Taj Mahal ain't bad. Let's get the Diplo Quarter in the capital. That'll help us maintain control of Mitla and Taruga, which are two key things. I'd also like to get Auckland and Cardiff because that would give me a 15% production towards all buildings, wonders and districts across my entire empire if I could get suzerainty of both of those because that is how the Kilwa works. It applies the bonus based on the district and the district type. Uh, workshop completed in Chunchun. Let's go ahead and get our industrial zone logistics. This is a great opportunity for us to increase our culture, um, which I'm quite happy about. Industrialization will be boosted. Let's go ahead and switch to military science for a turn. Isidore is ready to to finish the um, Forbidden City. That's fantastic. That's going to be plus one wildcard policy slots. We can plug in Republican Legacy for the seven housing and seven amenities. That should push some of our cities up into a happier level. We can go ahead and buy a whole bunch of luxuries as well. Eight cities at level one happiness, giving us a 10% yield boost across our empire. Super efficient game right now. Super, super, super efficient. Let's go ahead and get started on the Oxford. We may as well get started. I'm tempted to stop for the market first. That is plus one trade route and my trade routes are super valuable. Um, so it does seem quite good. I'm going to harvest the maize here. That's 300 gold. Um, I think that's worth more than slowly working that tile. Short term gold seems quite valuable to me right now. I'm make, actually making a surprising amount of tourism. 27 per turn just off the back of building a few wonders. I wouldn't have expected myself to be there making that much... Um, that much tourism. It's kind of funny how that works out. I often hear people talk about like winning games by tourism on accident and really that just comes down to playing on too low a difficulty level in my opinion. Um, but there's industrialization. We managed to have access to the plus one production from mines, access to coal, as well as access to coal power plants and factories. These are going to be super useful things, particularly the factory giving us AOE production, which will continue to ramp up our simming. And then the f coal power plant itself, actually, we have really good industrial zones in my empire. Like if we take a look at the industrial zones we have, we have a plus six, a plus five. This one's only going to get better. We have a plus three over here. These are all really, really good. I would love to double the adjacency. Let's do a... Yeah, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on pace to get Leonardo. The question is, do I want to get him quickly or do I just want to get him? Uh, I think it's not necessary for me to rush him. Not in the city of Daegu, at least. So I'm going to go ahead and get my Seo one because I'm missing quite a bit of science from not having my campus here built. We did get the workshop in Jeonju. Do I want to go for the industrial zone logistic or do I want to go for the factory? I think getting the factory up here would be really, really powerful. And then I could maybe purchase the coal power plant with gold. I do generate a little bit of coal... Let's have a look. Did I find coal inside my empire? I probably should have found coal. I did. Okay, I found two copies of coal, so this will have to get retooled. I'll need a builder for that. Um, let's go ahead and quickly grab a builder in here. We'll make that work. Do a little chop here to finish that industrial zone logistics a turn sooner. That'll put us definitely at the forefront of earning um, Leonardo. All right, there's the enlightenment. How good is rationalism? I would say it's on par with natural philosophy, which means it's not super important for us to plug it in. I think though, it would be worth plugging it in the turn before we switch uh, thingies. <clears throat> Now, here's a question. Do we want to plug in invention? I think we can lose Gothic architecture, plug in natural philosophy and plug in invention to get these great engineers. Remember, all of our great engineers have an extra charge. So this is actually a super valuable card. I think we also don't need feudal contract anymore. And instead, we can plug in craftsmen to get industrial zone adjacency. This all like fits really nicely into my build. I'm going to drop diplomatic league. And instead, I'm going to plug in vessel banking to get better trade routes. And so with that little bit of a change, I should be earning like an insane amount of great people points towards engineers. My current and... um. Future trade routes to Arabia. Sorry, I need to actually renew my friendship with him. Let's go ahead and get the Research Alliance. There we go. Um, yeah, my current and future trade routes to Cairo. Can I trigger a UI update? Yeah, two food, four production, 21 gold, three science, one culture, or one faith rather. That's really, really powerful. And I'm, I'm soon going to be able to place another trade route to them. All really, really good stuff. Uh, what's the next 
sort of break point. It would be good to get stock ex- stock exchanges. It's not like super important. I wouldn't say that great merchants have been like a top of my list right now, um, but it would be nice to grab those, especially if I could consider going for the Big Ben. It's hard to get Big Ben, but plus one economic policy slot is really, really powerful. And there is a couple of potential locations here. Does it need to be a flat tile? No, it just needs to be adjacent to a river. So there could be like a Big Ben somewhere here in this area, which, you know, potentially building that in the capital, 44 production. It's about a, what, a thousand production, 1,450. Yeah, I think we could get that pretty quickly. Right, so we completed the diplomatic quarter, which will get us plus one envoy because it's adjacent to the city center. We're going to go for the consulate, which will give us plus two influence per turn. That plus two influence will increase the rate at which we generate envoys by quite a significant amount. The baseline we generate at right now is five influence per turn. So this would be plus two, which would be a 40% increase. And then the chancery will be another plus three. So building these two buildings basically doubles the rate at which you get envoys, not including the plus two influence per turn from the charismatic leader card. So yeah, consulate and chancery, very important for city-state control, particularly in a game where you get Kilwa and you get so much benefit for being suzerain of city-states. Uh, so with the Enlightenment, our next goal will be to pick up mercantilism because it's a stepping stone towards civil engineering, which will give us the better builder card uh, instead of just giving plus two extra build actions, you get a 30% production boost and I'll be able to build farms on hills and I'll get a governor title. All fantastic stuff. Everything is pointing in the right direction for us right now. I'm feeling super good about our empire. Market completed in Guanju, which means I can activate this trader. We definitely want to be trading with Arabia just for that food and production, right? The food production and science is super good. Even if the actual gold yield isn't amazing, the fact that I can accelerate my capital is super nice. Oxford University is started. I'm going to plug in Isidore. That'll take five turns off it. Five turns doesn't seem like much, but let me tell you, it is enough. Somebody else built Terracotta Army, so I won't be able to boost up my spice levels. That's okay. This builder existed to go improve this coal. We are making some coal, which is good. I have another trade route available in Gyeongju. I'm saving my gold to be able to buy a coal power plant. So let's go ahead and hard build that trader in here to send to the capital. I managed to get the Seowon and Daegu. Let's get the library. That's a plus, a plus five science library and a plus 10 science university. We're looking super good um, on those fronts. Let's grab the factory. This is AOE production in the local area. It's plus three production to every city. This one, I believe, hits at least three to four cities. At least three cities that aren't already hit by a um, factory, which is really nice. Um, which is fantastic. So that's nine production here, potentially 18 production if we also get the coal power plant, which itself is worth six production. So tons of powerful stuff happening here in our empire. The production ramp is real. Okay, so you managed to build a consulate. Let's go ahead and grab the chancery again. We don't really care too much about the secondary effect. There are a couple of interesting secondary effects of these buildings. So for example, you do get the three influence per turn. And also if we kill spies in the city, we get a little boost of science. Uh, the more important thing is that if I hover over this, you could see I get plus three science in every chancery building. So this is actually, you know, helping quite a bit. And it'll also be production. For example, if I take, if I take more envoys into these city-states here, uh, it'll be production towards units, faith, it could be whatever, whatever. It's, so it's basically a wild card building, which is kind of like a really interesting concept. I like it. It's one of my favorite um, design decisions that the developers made when it comes to like districts is the diplomatic quarter and the, the government plaza. Really, really, really cool stuff. Taking stock of the situation, we just got economics. I think this is the point of the era where we just start like queuing up all the text of this era to delay our rollover to the next era. The longer we delay that rollover, the more control we have of how much science or rather the more science we will have not more control. Just the more science we have, the more culture we benefit from rolling over the technology. Library completed in Daegu. Let's get to work on the university. That's a plus 10 science university. Go ahead and get the coal mine online. This city now has 37 production per turn, which is amazing considering the position it was in not too recently where we're struggling to build literally anything. Already, uh, factory completed in Chuncheon. Let's go ahead and get the coal power plant. This will be plus six production, but more importantly, it also provides power to the city which will fuel up the factory to provide even more production. You can see I'm up to 80 production in Chunchen. Like the, the production numbers are starting to become insane. Let's pop two envoys into Cardiff, mainly for the suzerainty, which will give me a 15% production boost in Daegu. You can see there, 15% production towards buildings and wonders. That's plus five production per turn. It's like having an extra mine, a really good mine, like a coal mine. And my empire is looking really, really nice. Um, not exactly what I would consider to be a tall build, but we're like relatively tall considering most of my games where I go like huge amounts of cities, like an eight city game, that, that would be like what I would consider to be like a, a standard-ish build. Factory completed in Jeonju. Let's get that coal power plant. Again, plus 10 production on that coal power plant because the adjacency bonus of the district is getting doubled and the coal power plant provides production based on the adjacency bonus. Really, really good sim game. And also the electricity will provide 
extra production on the factory. My, my production is just insane right now. I'm, I'm feeling really good about it. I'm going to move the trader to the capital because the capital is the city that I want to build up. Um, Gyeongju, I think the move is to go for industrial zones here. I think that's my best play. Um, at least a plus three adjacency industrial zone is like acceptable. That's a 17 turn build. But more importantly, I'll be able to put a workshop in there. I'll be able to get more great uh, engineer points. Seowon completed in Busan. Let's go for the library. And actually, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to buy the coal power plant. So that's just instantaneously. Now I have electricity in the area. You can see this yellow border. This is the power map mode. And all of the cities inside this yellow border are now accessing electricity, which is super great. So if I take a look at Jeonju, what is the late game transition? Well, if there's a... Um, if I go to city overlap and click range, the entertainment complex over here hits like the majority of my empire. It might be worth it for me to get another entertainment complex to keep my amenities high. Uh, it could also be good for me to go for the commercial hub to get, um, to get, um, to get trade routes. I don't mind the commercial hub idea. It's like a completely acceptable idea. We could also go for the encampment. The theater square isn't completely off the cards either. Could build the Patala Palace if we really want that diplomatic policy slot. Is that how we want to do things? I mean, extra policy slots is really powerful. So we'll go for the water mill for plus one food, and then we'll go for the Patala Palace for the extra diplomatic policy slot. I I'm getting all, like, just having really strong production does give you the opportunity to build more wonders than you would normally be able to. So that'll be a 17 turn Patala Palace. The trade route in the capital. Um, I could open up trade with Russia, but I can't get a scientific alliance with them. So I'm just going to trade with Damascus. It is slightly less gold, but it's slightly better on the food production and um, science front, which kind of is the direction that I want to be taking my trade routes anyway. Oh no, I think someone stole Oxford. Very unfortunate. We do want range units to be better. And I would like to have the culture bombs on my districts, even though I'm probably not going to benefit too much from it. It is good to have. Yeah, range units, so better on defense, culture bombs on districts. We did lose the Oxford. It is gone, so that sucks. It would have been really nice to get the Oxford. I can't translate it into a different wonder. I will just translate it into a bank. Plus five gold per turn. Ain't too bad a translation. I don't need to get space initiative on Pingala yet. Pingala's sitting very pretty. I don't need to do anything on you. I could go for Reina. A Reina in Gyeongju isn't bad, especially if we go for harbor stuff. We got the Chancery in the capital. We could go for the sewer here. It'll be three turns to build. It would give me plus two housing. At this stage of the game, plus two housing could be quite handy. We are about, about to hit our growth limit in the capital, so that would allow us to keep, keep pumping up population. We have another spy. This spy I'm tempted to put into the capital to defend. So let's go ahead and travel to Seoul, I think. So with the spy completed, we have the Seowon, we have the entertainment complex. What other district do we want to build in Pyongyang? Um, it could be good to build an encampment here. Sometimes it's good to just have an encampment knocking around. We could also just opt to go for the industrial zone. There's a couple of like decent ones. Nothing too amazing. Um, we could go for the harbor. Plus three harbor here. It's not the worst thing ever. We could go for a preserve and make these tiles even better. Um, I don't know if that's necessary. Let's go for the harbor. It's a little bit of a trade route. Extra trade route. It's pretty decent. Doesn't particularly improve the city, but you know, it, it kind of fits into our build in a reasonable way. And so it's totally fair to do. Again, more big old religious battles happening inside my empire. We take a look at Guangzhou. We managed to finish the bank. Let's go for the stock exchange. Plus four gold and seven gold when powered and the city will be powered. It is inside, inside my power radius. So that's uh, seven turns of production for 11 gold per turn. Really powerful. I should also consider exploring the map a little bit more, but we are going to be doing in the not too distant future the um, Earth satellite, so that'll explore the map for us. We kind of didn't do much exploration this game. Coal power plant is completed in Shunshun. I do think I want to go for a University of Saint Core here. Um, so let's go ahead and pop it right there. University of Saint Core. A little bit of faith, or sorry, rather a little bit of science, a little bit of faith. All good stuff. That city has a ton of tiles anyway. Let's go ahead and chop this. Sweden, I need to get open borders with you again, good lady. Uh, establish resident embassy. Let's make sure we declare friendships and establish embassies with everyone we can on the map. We just want, we just don't want people to go to war with us because we're, we're having a really good sim game where we're just able to sit back and do whatever we want, which is honestly my favorite way to play Civ. Like I'm ha I'm actually having such a fun time optimizing as Sejong. Um, it's turn 153 and we're making like 350 signs per turn. Like that feels amazing. Um, it's time to claim a great person. Aha, there's Leonardo. Boom, we take Leonardo. Who's the next guy? Filippo Brunelleschi. I would love to get Brunelleschi if I could because he gives you plus 315 production towards wonders and i believe he has two charges baseline which would mean he would have three charges oh you know what i think i could have translated this into a big ben 
Yeah, I think I could have. I think I might have messed up slightly there. It's okay. I could have translated Oxford into Big Ben. We'll we'll figure that out. Uh, university in Daegu completed. Let's go for the factory and the coal power plant. For, mainly for the great engineer points. The city's already benefiting from factory and coal power plant. So we just want these to get the... We just want them to get the... Um, the great, the extra great engineer points so that we earn great engineers faster. Let's go ahead and plug in Leonardo da Vinci. So we're going to go from 80 culture per turn. Boom. We click this. I refresh my cities. Boom. 90 culture per turn. That was worth 10 culture per turn. And we haven't even built all of our workshops in all of our cities. So it was a good step. It was a, you know, if you go from 80 to 90, I think that's a pretty damn good increase. Like if you were making 80,000 euro per year and you went to 90,000 euro per year, I don't think you would be complaining. You might complain about your tax, taxes being too high because goddamn. But let's do that again. Trigger Leonardo. So now every single workshop in my empire is generating six extra culture, which is fantastic. Huge amount of culture, up to 100 culture per turn. And we haven't even finished building our industrial zones and we will get be getting more. That's like two, that's like a, a triple monument, right? I, I, I love how I always measure culture in terms of monuments. It's like, oh, dude, that's like two monuments worth. <laughs> it's like the, it's like the universal currency of, um, of culture is how many monuments is that worth? I think we could go for Casa de Contrat Contratación here. Plus three great merchant points. I don't think we, it would mainly be for the governor promotions, which makes me not think it's super worth it. We could also go for the ores of gas, but maybe I would be better off just like cracking out um, like a couple of campus research grants or something to speed our way towards the late game. So we'll just do two campus research grants. I think that's a reasonable choice. Yeah, so in the city of Busan, let's grab the university. That's plus 10 science per turn. And I think that's going to be a wrap on this episode. Good progress was made. I think our next goal are going to be is going to be to get to research lamps and then start really scaling for the super late game and then start hitting spaceports. That's going to be it for me though. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>